This is a bonus part for lecture 3.2, Set Operations. In this video, we extend the set operations of union and intersection to the union and intersection of three or more sets. Recall that the union of two sets A and B consists of all objects X, satisfying the condition that either X is an element of A or X is an element of B. This is equivalent to the condition that for some set S in the set consisting of A and B, X is an element of S. The intersection of two sets A and B consists of all objects X satisfying the condition that X is an element of A and X is an element of B. This is equivalent to the condition that for any set S in the set consisting of A and B, X is an element of S. It can be shown that the union of three sets A, B, and C is equal to the, un to the set of all objects X, which satisfy the condition X is an element of A, or X is an element of B, or X is an element of C. This is equivalent to the condition that for some set S in the set consisting of A, B, and C, X is an element of S. Similarly, the intersection of three sets A, B, and C is equal to the set of all objects X which satisfy the condition X is an element of A and X is an element of B and X is an element of C. This is equivalent to the condition that for any set S in the set consisting of A, B, and C, X is an element of S. This gives us an alternative definition of set union and intersection, which can be extended to an arbitrary family of sets, however large. Let F be a family of sets. The union of all sets S, where S is in F, consists of all objects X satisfying the condition that for some set S in F, X is an element of S. The intersection of all sets S, where S is in F, consists of all objects X satisfying the condition that for any set S in F, X is an element of S. If the family F consists of sets S1, S2, up to Sn, for some positive integer n, we write the union of F over F as S1 union S2, and so on union Sn. We also write this as the union of Si, I from 1 to n. If the family F consists of sets Si for each positive integer i, we write the union over f as the union of Si, i from 1 to positive infinity. More generally, if the family f consists of sets Si for each i in a non-empty set capital I, we write the union over f as the union of Si, i in capital I. We use analogous notation to denote the intersection over a family F. Consider the following claim. The union of all closed intervals from minus 1 over n to 1 over n, n from 1 to positive infinity, is equal to the closed interval from minus 1 to 1. This is equivalent to the statement, for every x, x is an element of the union of all closed intervals from minus 1 over n to 1 over n and from 1 to positive infinity if and only if x is an element of the closed interval from minus 1 to 1. To prove this, let x be an arbitrary real number. For the forward implication, assume that x is an element of the union of all closed intervals from minus 1 over n to 1 over n, n from 1 to positive infinity. Then, by the definition of extended set union, 
x is an element of the closed interval from minus 1 over n to 1 over n for some positive integer n. That is, x is greater than or equal to negative 1 over n and is less than or equal to 1 over n. Since n is greater than or equal to 1, 1 over n is less than or equal to 1 and minus 1 over n is greater than or equal to minus 1. Thus, x is greater than or equal to minus 1 and is less than or equal to 1. So x is an element of the closed interval from minus 1 to 1. For the converse, suppose that x is an element of the closed interval from minus 1 to 1. We need to show that x is an element of the union of all closed intervals from minus 1 over n to 1 over n and from 1 to positive infinity. This is equivalent to the condition that for some positive integer n, x is an element of the closed interval from minus 1 over n to 1 over n. Since 1 is equal to 1 over 1 and 1 is a positive integer, it is true that x is an element of a closed interval from minus 1 over n to 1 over n for some positive integer n. So by the definition of extended set union, x is an element of the union of all closed intervals from minus 1 over n to 1 over n and from 1 to positive infinity. This proves the claim. Consider the following claim. The intersection of all closed intervals from minus 1 over n to 1 over n and from 1 to positive infinity is equal to the singleton with element 0. This is equivalent to the condition for every x, x is an element of the intersection of all closed intervals from minus 1 over n to 1 over n and from 1 to positive infinity, if and only if x is an element of the singleton with element 0. To prove this, let x be an arbitrary real number. Assume first that x is an element of the singleton with element 0. We need to show that x is an element of the intersection of all closed intervals from minus 1 over n to 1 over n and from 1 to positive infinity. This is equivalent to the condition that for every positive integer n, x is an element of the closed interval from minus 1 over n to 1 over n. Since the only element of the singleton is 0, x must be equal to 0. Let n be an arbitrary positive integer then minus 1 over n is less than or equal to 0, and 1 over n is greater than or equal to 0. Hence, x, which is equal to 0, is an element of the closed interval from minus 1 over n to 1 over n. Since n is arbitrary, this shows that x is an element of the intersection of all closed intervals from minus 1 over n to 1 over n, and from 1 to positive infinity. For the converse, suppose that x is an element of the intersection of all closed intervals from minus 1 over n to 1 over n and from 1 to positive infinity. For the sake of a contradiction, assume that x is not an element of the singleton whose element is 0. That is, suppose that x is not equal to 0. Then the absolute value of x is positive. So 1 over the absolute value of x is also positive. Take m to be the floor of 1 over the absolute value of x. Then by the definition of floor function, 1 over the absolute value of x is less than m plus 1. So the absolute value of x is greater than 1 over m plus 1. Hence, Either x is greater than 1 over m plus 1, or x is less than minus 1 over m plus 1. 
Now, m is a non-negative integer since 1 over the absolute value of x is positive. So, m plus 1 is a positive integer. Thus, x is not an element of the closed interval from minus 1 over m plus 1 to 1 over m plus 1. That is, x is not an element of a closed interval from minus 1 over n to 1 over n for some positive integer n. Therefore, x is not an element of the intersection of all closed intervals from minus 1 over n to 1 over n and from 1 to positive infinity. This gives a contradiction. It follows that x must be equal to 0, that is, x is an element of the singleton whose element is 0. This completes the proof of the claim. You have come to the end of Part 3 of Lecture 3.2. Before you proceed to Lecture 4.1, you are strongly encouraged to do the exercises given at the end of these slides. Thank you for your attention.